Hey there, Improv Tipsters. Welcome back to Improv Tips, where I and some of the best improvisers in the world give you improv tips and advice to make you a better, more confident, and happier improviser wherever you are in your improv journey. I am, as always, your host, Paul Valancourt. Let's begin. Today's guest improv tipper is Jill Bernard, and Jill is one of my favorite online improv personalities, online to me because I live so far from her, but whenever I'm on Facebook and I see that Jill Bernard has commented on an improv post, boom, I am there for it because she always has something smart and insightful and fascinating to say about improv, and I always want to know what it is. That's why I asked her to do a tip today. Now, Jill started with Comedy Sports Twin Cities in 1993 and has been going like gangbusters ever since. She's one of the co-founders of the Huge Theater and the co the Huge Theater, incidentally, is also hosting the combined Black and Funny slash Twin Cities Improv Festival this June. Ding, ding. All that information down below. I want to make sure you knew about that. She's also been teaching around the world. She's taught in 22 countries, 40 states here in America. Basically, you spin a globe and point to a place and you say, here, yeah. Yeah, probably there. She's probably taught someone improv there. She was also a featured teacher on the MTV show Made, which I think is pretty awesome. And uh, and she also teaches a weekly online solo improv workout. So uh, if you want to check that out, ding, ding, that information is down below. And coincidentally, my connection to Jill is really about solo improv. Before I talk about that, though, let me just say I did this series, ding, ding, of videos about studying improv at home alone, as sad and funny as that is. And then I also, ding, ding, wrote this uh, free ebook about solo improv. So you might want to check those out. Uh, just a little plug for me. But she teaches this weekly um, uh, solo workout, as I said, that information, boom, down below. And then I was uh, a, a teacher at Camp Improv Utopia a few years ago, and at, at the same time that Jill was, and I saw that she was hosting this uh, talk or teaching this class about solo improv. And I knew that she had this show called Drum Machine, solo improv show that she had um, been she performed at over 40 festivals, so she knew uh, quite a bit about the subject. Now, I hadn't started yet doing Man vs. Movie, ding, ding, some of those right there, which is my own one-man improvised movie show, which I really love and enjoy. Um, and, uh, and so I was kind of still trying to wrap my head around it, so I wanted to go hear Jill talk about this. And I did not regret it because hearing her talk about it really helped me solve some internal problems and resistance that I was having. And I credit it as one of the things that helped me get over that mental hump and actually start doing that man versus movie show, which I, as I said, I, I really love. So thank you, Jill, for that. Um, but you didn't come here to hear me talk and talk on and on about Jill Bernard. You want to hear Jill Bernard in her own words. But before we do that, let me just say, if you're enjoying the improv tips, please consider subscribing and throwing a like down below and comment down below. And let me know what you think about this tip, how you are going to use it in your own work. So with all that out of the way, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Jill Bernard. Hi, Paul. I do have... I do have a tip for improvisers. Thank you for, for letting me share it. This is the tip. You don't have to do any scenes that make you feel unsafe or uncomfortable or that feel demeaning or disrespectful or discriminatory to you or to anyone. You don't have to do those scenes. You can just stop them. At Huge Theater, what we do is something we picked up from Fair Play, Minnesota. We just go time out. And we stop that scene. We don't do it. We start it over or replace, replace it with something else. Yes, and is a great tool, but it's not a bully tool. And it should not be used to force you to say yes to things that don't make you feel right, things that you know are wrong or that make you miserable or re-traumatize you. You don't have to play along with things that aren't fun. I trust you, and I know that you know what kinds of risk and what kind of fear is a good stretch for you. Uh, yeah, comfort zone. <laughs> Being outside of your comfort zone is great, but that comfort zone is about improv. Improv should be the scary part, not anything else about that experience. Uh, I started improv in the 90s, and there was very much of a culture of you had to be game for anything, like just up for anything, and honestly, it caused a lot of damage, a lot of trauma. This is not the Beijing opera. Suffering for your art does not make it better, and we don't get paid enough. Um, sometimes people think that they have to do things that they don't want to because their scene partner or their teacher is someone who has power over them or in the community and can impact their future success. Well, here's the news. Right now, at this moment, 
in history, those power structures are collapsing. They don't exist anymore. So if someone tells you you have to say yes to all offers, even if they're traumatizing or insulting, you can say no to that person. Their power is gone. I wanted to tell you this tip because I was talking to a friend I was, I was talking to my friend a while ago, but it stayed with me. I was talking to a friend whose classmates in her first ever improv class would call her super misogynistic, insulting names or give her completely derogatory roles to play in scenes. And she, she thought, well, I guess that's what improv is and put up with it. And it was years later that she found out that, no, that's not what improv is. I think many people have made that same discovery. Improv is not about making yourself do things that feel wrong, that make you feel violated. That's not what it is. Um, our colleagues, uh, Fair Play Minnesota, put together a great collection of documents for how to have discussions with your teammates about ways to take good care of each other. And it's information that you can pass on to your teachers and your directors as well. We should be here to make this a really beautiful experience for everyone, including ourselves. Um, well, that's the tip. Not a very cheery one. Thanks, everybody. Hey friends, thanks for checking out the video, and uh, if you want to hear a little bit more, check out one of these two quality videos. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and follow us on social media. All the links are in the description down below, and let me know what you would like to see an improv tip about. Thanks for watching.